it's been a couple of weeks since the CFTC put out its swaps definition, and since then the question has been when are we going to see some information in the Federal Register which will start the clock ticking for these rules to take effect. We're here to talk about that today. My guest is George Bolenbacher from Kinetics Trading Solutions. George, thanks for coming by and sharing Thank your you. insights. So uh, we're going to get into some of the details, but first of all, this issue of you know when we're going to see something in the Federal Register, which, as I said, will start the clock ticking for 60 days when rules will take effect. Uh, can you give us any, any insight in that piece of it? Because that seems to be one of the big questions out there. Right. We're hearing from the CFTC that it will be uh, August 13th, so that's a week from, from this Monday. Right. And uh, the clock will start then and it will uh, officially go live October 12th, if okay. that's what, if they do what they say they're going right, to do. Right, right. So then what happens October 12th? Well, the first thing is registration. Uh, you have to register by that date. Uh, there are two forms of registration, one for a swap dealer mm -hmm. and one for a major swap participant. Right. Uh, and there's a little trick in the swap dealer registration because one of the categories is anyone who does swaps as part of their regular business. So you don't have to be acting as a dealer to be in that category. Yeah. As long as your annual trading volume is high enough, you'll have to register as a dealer and then there's lots of stuff you have to do as well. Okay. MSP is a little different. It's done based on the the uh, exposure, not the annual volume, oh, right. uh, and that number is fairly low, four billion total, two billion in any category. Mm -hmm. So the first thing to find out right away is whether you're in one of those categories that has to register. Okay. Now, now there's a lot obviously in play around uh, CEF trading, clearing, and all these other other pieces. So specifically at this point. If the clock starts ticking next Monday, what, what is going to be in play? I mean, you mentioned the registration piece. Okay. A couple of things that won't be in play right away. Uh, clearing, mandatory clearing. Right. Uh, there have been a couple of applications for mandatory clearing, but the comment period is still open, and then they have to look at them and mm -hmm. decide, and then they have a delay once they've actually decided. So first of the year maybe something like that for clearing okay ceph trading is even further out because they haven't actually published the rules for how mm. cefs have to work right so rules first then people apply to be a cef then they apply to trade so end of the first quarter something like that for those two big areas right there are however two big areas that will start uh, on october 12th if the CFTC does what they say. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One is reporting. Mm. All trades will have to be reported, and who reports them is a little complicated. Dealers for all customers report, but dealer to dealer, it has to be done based on an agreement. And the reporting party in that arrangement right determines the the na the swap identifier the transaction identifier okay. so you have to know who's doing that right and then for every day after the trade date that reporting party has to submit a price to the repository daily and you don't want two people doing it because right. their prices might be different sure so you have to work out who's reporting and what they're going to report that's one big piece of the work that has to be done. The other is a whole bunch of business conduct rules mm. that also kick in. Two main categories. External has to do with KYC information, has to do with disclosure to the other party, okay. primarily on the part of dealers, and has to do with suitability. So you have to make sure that the swap you're recommending or offering to someone is suitable. There are uh, term sheets before the trade that right. have to be put out. Um, so there's quite a bit of, of uh, external business conduct. You also have to be prepared to do scenario analysis for your counterparty if they request it. Wow. Okay. So no, we're not quite done. Okay. <laughs> not quite done. <laughs> Internal business conduct is the other main area, and that has to do with record keeping. Mm, right. And the record keeping rules are very stringent. Mm. One of the problems with all of this is that one of the categories of swap, which people weren't expecting, is 
FX forward trades, deliverable forward FX. People do trillions of these. Yeah. Financing exports, et cetera, et cetera. That's all now in the reporting mo mode, wow. in the business conduct mode. You have to record phone conversations. You have to uh, record any other conversations you have. You have to keep records of mail and faxes, mm -hmm. et cetera. You have to have a uh, risk management program in place. Most people have that, but you have to kind of pull out the pieces that yeah. fit for Dodd-Frank. You have to have a chief compliance officer. No one's beating down the door to be the chief compliance right, officer. I think so. So there, there's a, quite a bit of stuff that you have to do by the middle of October, and then you can think about the things that are going to happen after. Right. So. Um, if I'm sitting here today, beginning of August, so I've got August, September, and so maybe two and a half months if we're generous, right? Figure uh, two months. Two Figure. months, yeah. What What's the the best way forward here to kind of get those ducks in a row? Um, okay. You know, do you have any anything you could share with us in terms of, you know, I, I can see sort of the deer in the headlights look like this is now it's really real and right. it's coming at me fast. So the first thing is, to do things in parallel, split up the task and work on several things at once. Okay. The idea of doing things serially won't make it. Right. So a group that's going to work on reporting. Who are we going to, who's going to report? Who are they going to report to? What do they have to know to report? Uh, uh, business conduct, KYC, we've got to gather up all this extra information. Who's going to prepare the scenario analysis? Right. Uh, do we record our telephone conversations? Uh, everywhere in the world. Mm. Do we record them in all the departments that are likely to be uh, affected? So the key is divide the tasks up and have w teams working in parallel on those tasks right. and keep track of what's happening. Okay. Because uh, it's vacation time right. and you're going to get to the middle of October before you know it. Right. So finding in those tasks you have to do, the one that'll take the most time, get that started. Then next week, the one that'll take a little less time, get that started and work your way out so right. that just like cooking dinner, it all comes out on At the same the, time. Octo October 12th. <laughs> now, uh, one final question, George. So October 12th, theoretically, that's the day we're looking at. October 13th, all the, you know, several of these pieces have to be put in place. Do you have any sense of how it's likely to play out? I mean, you know, the CFTC is not likely to be knocking on doors on the 13th, 14th of October. Uh, I mean, is there any wiggle room here? Uh, I mean, is it just kind of a, a check the box that you can sort of like... Uh, the, the registration application is a check the box form. Okay. Um, and I would think the National Futures Association who is preparing all this, they're handling the registration for the CFTC, is going to be in a run down the sheets, check things mode for the first um, couple of weeks, if not right. longer. Right. Um, but certain things will we'll start right away. Reporting on the transactions will begin October 12th. Yeah. So there isn't any wiggle room about that. Right. Foreign entities that are swap dealers have some wiggle room under a something called substituted compliance, where the CFTC may allow, if their local jurisdiction has comparable rules, mm -hmm. may allow them to use that. But the fact is, if your local jurisdiction doesn't have comparable rules, don't count on substituted compliance right. because it won't be available. So certain things are going to happen right away, and, and those things there's very little wiggle room on. The CFTC is not in a mood to give people lots of leeway, particularly when after we've had things like, like uh, Peregrine and like yeah. LIBOR. They're really right. um, you know, not in a mood to give everybody a lot of slack. Sure. If you get started and do it in an orderly, parallel way, you'll probably be all right. Okay. And if something actually slips over, one little thing may not be too big a deal. Right. But there isn't much time. Okay, very good. And that's a great way to end our, our discussion. There isn't much time. So talking about some of the Dodd-Frank rules uh, taking effect, it looks like it's going to be October 12th. 
uh, if the CFTC publishes in the Federal Register on August 13th, which is the, uh, the indication at this point. I've been joined by George Bolenbach, who's been walking us through what's going to happen on October 12th, what you need to have in place. Specifically, the key areas are kind of the registration and the reporting, uh, two of the big keys. So um, thank you, George, for coming by and sharing with us your insight and walking us through this, and thank you for watching.